let us worship. Good morning. I'm Jürgen Kobanka, and I'm a member of the board of trustees here at South Valley Unitarian Universalist Society. My pronouns are his, him, and he. Come, come, whoever you are, you are welcome here. No matter your age, your size, the color of your eyes, your hair, your skin, you are welcome here. No matter your gender, whom you love, how you speak, or whatever your abilities, you are welcome here. You're welcome here, whether you come with laughter in your heart or tears in your eyes, you are welcome here. No matter what you have experienced in the past, no matter what awaits you in the future, you are welcome here. Whether you believe in God all of the time, or some of the time, or none of the time, you are welcome here. This is a community of open minds, loving hearts, and willing hands. You are welcome here at South Valley Unitarian Universalist Society. As the season shows more signs of sliding into winter, the leaves coat our lawns and the temperature has moved below freezing. As 2020 gradually reaches its end, despite a pandemic that seems ever renewed, and as we have experienced so much loss this year, the unexpected loss of friends, family, and loved ones, there is hope in the air. For some of us, we see the end of madness in the White House, an incoming administration that prioritizes inclusiveness and an increase in global environmental responsibility. There is a whisper in the wind of a COVID-19 vaccine that has done incredibly well on its first trials. And yet we need to remember that not everyone has equal access, that some communities and groups typically receive more hardship and less benefits than others. Today, we are here to remember one such community. Today, we mourn for and celebrate the lives of transgender people who have paid the ultimate price in a world that does not honor their authenticity. Let us remember that we still have a world that needs healing in so many ways. Our gathering hymn this month is number 188, Come, Come, Whoever You Are. Mary will sing the lyrics, uh, and those will also be in the chat box if you would like to sing along in your home. And music will be played by David Norton. going to put the chalice lighting words in the chat box. If you have a small candle or chalice of your own, we welcome you to light it with us. Please unmute yourselves and feel free to stand as we all say our chalice lighting words together. We light this we light chalice, this chalice for, the for the warmth of love, love for the light of truth, of truth and, and for, the, for energy the energy of, of action. action.
We would like to extend an especially warm welcome to those of you who are visiting us for the first time. We are so glad you're here. We would love to get to know you. Our greeter today, Tammy, is going to drop our connection card into the chat box for any of our newcomers so you can be connected to our community. This is a caring, supportive community. If you find yourself in need of support or care or just a listening ear, please fill out our pastoral care card and our pastoral care team and or our minister will be in touch. The link to our pastoral care card is now in the chat box. You can also find it on our website. All of our online services are intergenerational. To find out more about the Religious Exploration Programming, please contact Rebecca Britt, the Director of Religious Exploration. Her email address is being dropped in the chat box now. We have a lot going on here at South Valley and one of the best ways to get and stay connected is via our weekly newsletter happening. You can sign up to receive our newsletter by sending an email to Lori Quigley. Her email is being dropped in the chat box as well. Our community calendar on our website lists midweek events and classes and you can also find us on Facebook. Although we have to remain physically separate for now, we are still connected. So uh, we would first like to begin our announcements with a shout out to the auction team, Kristen May and everyone else who worked so hard, uh, including our jazz band to put together an amazing uh, event. We still don't have a tally from how much was raised for the church, but I know in my own family, it was quite a bit. Uh, so we wanna thank you all for your hard work. It was such an amazing experience. We all had a lot of fun and uh, really enjoyed seeing you in all of your uh, costumes and uh, your, your pictures of, and dreams of travel. Um, hopefully someday that those days will come again and uh, when we can be together in community and experience this wonderful world that we've been blessed with. Uh, auction items that were purchased or won uh, can be picked up today at the church from 1 to 3 p.m. Also coming up on Saturday, the 22nd of November is our bread communion service. Uh, there will be bread and butter kits available for pickup at the church this week, uh, including today after services from 1 to 3 p.m. at the same time as the auction items pickup and as well on November uh, 18th, which is a Wednesday from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, you're welcome to come and pick up those bread and butter kits for the bread communion service. If there are any other announcements from members of the board or administration at this time, feel free to jump in. If not, Jordan, um, yes. can I just remind everyone, Susan as a Gary, you've sent out a note. Um, if you have any drop offs for the homeless center, leave them today as well from one to three. A lot of men's clothing is needed and blankets. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Susan, and our uh, social action committee for all you do. We will now share the warmth of community. You're invited to unmute yourself at this time, and it will be a little chaotic for a moment, but you're all welcome to call out to one another in the Zoom space or use your chat box function to say hello and let us know where you're joining us from. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Oh, thanks for joining us. Hello. One good thing we didn't have a large cleanup after the auction like we usually do. <laughs> we all went to bed at a decent time. Yeah, I'm used to getting home at one in the morning. <laughs> hey, this is David. I just got an email from Kristen May, and the preliminary auction number is eleven thousand five hundred fifty-three. That's great. But, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that, that's really, really good. So, that's really yeah. good. Great. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well done, everybody. Mm -hmm. And let's transition to our time for all ages. Rebecca, take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Britt. My pronouns are she and her. Um, as I was said, I was, I'm the Director of Religious Exploration. We've got events for all ages happening this week. So if you're not getting my e emails from me, check out that email in the chat. But now I have a story I'm really excited to share. 
So this is a story called, oops, When Aiden Became a Brother. It's by Kaya Lukoff with illustrations by Keilani Juanita. When Aiden was born, everyone thought he was a girl. His parents gave him a pretty name. His room looked like a girl's room. He wore clothes that other girls liked wearing. But as Aiden got bigger, he hated the sound of his name. He felt like his room belonged to someone else and he always ripped or stained his clothes accidentally on purpose. Everyone thought he was just a different kind of girl. Some girls have rooms full of science experiments and bug collections. Lots of girls didn't wear dresses. But Aiden didn't feel like any kind of girl. He was really another kind of boy. It was hard to tell his parents when he knew that about himself. But it was even harder not to. It took some time to adjust and they learned a lot from other families with transgender kids like him. Aiden explored different ways of being a boy. He tried out lots of names until one stuck. They changed his bedroom into a place where he belonged. He also took much better care of his new clothes. Then one day, mom and dad had something to tell him. I'm going to have a baby, mom announced. A baby, Aiden said. Does that mean I get to be a big brother? Of course, said dad, ruffling his hair. Aiden thought that being a big brother was an important job for a boy like him. He wanted to make sure this baby felt understood right away. The baby needed clothes, so Aiden and his mom went shopping. There were so many choices. Would the baby like seahorses or penguins better? Are you having a boy or a girl? Asked a lady. Aiden didn't like it when people asked if he was a boy or a girl. He hoped the baby couldn't hear yet. He was glad when mom just smiled and said, I'm having a baby. The baby's room needed to be painted, so dad, Aiden and his dad went to the hardware store. Dad chose a gallon of sky blue paint and Aiden added a puffy cloud white. Are you excited for your new brother or sister? Asked the paint guy. I'm excited to be a big brother, Aiden said. The paint guy looked confused. Aiden could tell he had a different question to ask and he was glad his dad was there. The big rollers were fun to paint with. This room feels just like being outside, Aiden exclaimed. He'd always felt trapped in his room before they fixed it, but his new sibling wouldn't feel that, would, would have that feeling right, wouldn't have that feeling right away. You're right, said dad. Let's try to make some shapes in the clouds. Every baby needs a name. Aiden loved getting to choose his own, but he remembered that it had been hard for his parents to let go of the name they gave him. He looked for names that could fit a, this new person, no matter who they grew up to be. Aiden's chosen a lot of nature names like Willow, Sage, Forest, and Sky. Babies need someone to read to them, so Aiden practiced and practiced, and practiced. Dad wanted to teach Aiden to change diapers? Uh, maybe later, Aiden said. He decided that picking flowers for his mom was more important. Two weeks before the baby's due date, Aiden started to worry. Maybe he should have picked different clothes. The blue walls might be too bright. He 
he wished he could ask the baby which name they liked best. Mom came to tuck him in. Are you feeling okay, sweetie? She asked. Aiden put his hands where he thought the baby's ears would be. Do you think the baby will be happy with everything? He whispered. I don't want them to feel like I did when I was little. But what if I got everything wrong? What if I don't know how to be a good big brother? Mom hugged him tight. When you were born, we didn't know you were going to be our son. We made some mistakes, but you helped us fix them. And you taught us how important it is to love someone for exactly who they are. This baby is so lucky to have you, and so are we. The next morning, Aiden found boxes of his old baby pictures. He looked so different back then. It hadn't been easy, but he liked the boy he was growing into. Maybe everything wouldn't be perfect for this baby. Maybe he'd have to fix mistakes he didn't even know he was making. And maybe that was okay. Aiden knew how to love someone, and that was the most important part of being a big brother. And look, the baby's born and they're at a party with big balloons that say, it's a baby. The end. Thank you, everyone. Becca, thank you. I really love that story. So this is the time in our service for the offertory. This community, our church, and its many ministries are only made possible by the gifts you give of your time, your talent, and your treasure. Many of you pledge monthly to support our work, and for this, we are grateful. Your gifts help to ensure that we are able to live our values of love and justice in the world outside. Part of our ministry at South Valley includes sharing our Sunday worship offerings with a charitable organization that aligns with our principles and values. Your gift today will support the work of South Valley and the Transgender Education Advocates, also known as T of Utah. T of Utah is dedicated to finding and creating opportunities to better the lives of transgender, gender nonconforming, and non-binary Utahns. From working to make life easier to change your name and gender marker, to ending trans exclusions in healthcare, to educating shelters and facilities on how to welcome and care for transgender individuals and families, T of Utah is committed. South Valley uses Giveify to collect online donations during worship. You are invited to give using the link that is going to be put in the chat box, or you can go to your phone and download the app. Thank you for your generosity and dedication to justice and love. Tammy has put our offering words in the chat box. You're invited to say these words along with me. We are this church. We are its hands, its heart, its voice. Together, we share the wealth of this community and sustain it with our gifts.
that I feared you lived inside my world so softly protected only by the kindness of your nature you are my sister and I have received and all we have found the courage to give may we be truly thankful may these gifts be a blessing to south valley and to t of utah good morning my name is sophia hostingi and i am a transgender woman my pronouns are she, her, hers, and sometimes they. In addition to having the privilege to serve on the board of directors here at South Valley, I am also the chair of the Transgender Inclusion Project and serve on the board of ACLU. I would like to open with a quote from Becoming a Visible Man by Jameson Green. For me, Community exists when I don't have to be afraid to let others around me know who I am, when I don't have to worry about surviving hostility simply because I am different in some way, whether that is gender and sex related or because of the color of my skin or my family background or my occupation. I want a community in which I receive the same respect I give to others and the same level of services and opportunities that others receive a community that is conscious, caring, and respectful of all life and all human expression that is not harmful to others. I want this kind of community for everyone around the world. Regardless of anyone's personal identity or expression, I want violence and oppression to end. Jameson is a transgender man who transitioned in the early to mid-90s in San Francisco. 
He led FTM International for about eight years after the death of its founder. Jameson was a, one of a few key people that pressed for the inclusiveness of the transgender community in what was then the lesbian, gay, and bisexual communities. Jameson has helped make the FTM community more visible and help build community within that group. Mr. Green has served on the boards of the Transgender Law and Policy Institute and the Equality Project and was an advisory member, advisory board member of the National Center for Transgender Equality and chaired the Board of Gender Education and Advocacy. He served as a president of the World Professional Association for Transgender Health from 2014 to 2016. International Transgender Day of Remembrance is held on November 20th every year. I have attended TDOR somewhere almost every year since my early transition in 2008. Last year, I was honored with the privilege of emceeing the event at the Utah State Capitol. Every year, the focus is the same. We will keep having TDOR until the violence against trans people the world over stops. When people stop dying because of having the courage to be the people that they need to be. TDOR began as a candlelight vigil in 1999 to pay homage on the death of Rita Hester in 1998, a crime that has not been solved to this day. Every year, the deaths due to the transgender violence around the world is tabulated and a candle is lit to honor the life taken from us. Every year, we read the names of the dead and honor their courage. This year, over 430 people in the world have died due to anti-transgender violence, over 40 in the US alone, continuing to make a new record. Their names and pictures are displayed in the slideshow that you've been watching. Each and every life was one that was taken that should not have been. We honor each life and for each I wish rest in power. While not every person murdered is transgender, we all have lost their lives because of anti-transgender violence. Some of the violence is so brutal, it brings tears to my eyes to even think that someone would be so brutal, so unsympathetic, so uncaring. Most of the lives lost are transgender women. Of those transgender women of color, many of the deaths are in our Southern neighbor and especially Brazil. Many of those deaths are transgender women who, can, who engaged in consensual sex work because that was the only occupation available to them. Because there's so much violence against women who work in that field, they were more than prone to fall victim to it as well. Issues of inclusion aside, trans people have also been having difficulty at getting access to medically necessary health care, a right that we are still fighting for in this country. Anyone who does not fit the societally defined norm suffers from the unconscious bias and hangups of others who are guided by tropes, misinformation, and inaccurate narratives of others. Because our Western European roots promote a dyadic black or white, good or bad, in or out, either or way of thinking, many people are classified as in or out, belonging or not belonging, safe or a threat. This way of thinking does not lend itself to multidimensional aspects or gradations. And as a result, transgender women of color are thrice labeled as out and as threats because they are LGBT, because they are women, and because they are not white. Addressing our way of thinking and relating along any of these dimensions will have impacts on all of these communities, especially those who share intersectional identities. Since I moved to Utah, I have witnessed statewide non-discrimination passed. I've seen the Supreme Court uphold marriage equality. I've seen our state beat back <clears throat> conversion therapy. I've seen our legislature pass anti-hate crimes legislation and seen the Supreme Court bar discrimination and employment against trans people. It's a good start, but we have so far to go. Medically necessary health care is still not considered a right, especially for trans people. Trans people have been barred from military service. There are two competing bills in the nation's capital. One would deny all forms of discrimination based on gender identity or sexual orientation, while Senator Lee's Fairness for All bill would allow discrimination based on religious beliefs, pushing the Utah compromise nationally. We need to resist this move. Religion is not, I repeat, is not an excuse for discrimination. Furthermore, we need to extend the non-discrimination statutes in this state to remove the carve-outs for discrimination against our brothers and our sisters. 
Trans people and others are also impacted by how we do policing and the lack of affordable housing. And finally, we still don't have a single trans person elected to public office in this state. Central to the respect of human dignity is how we as a community practice inclusion. I look at inclusion as a series of stages. In the first stage, we have tolerance. This is an attitude where you may not like what the other represents, but you will at least not throw them out. As we progress toward acceptance, there's a sense of understanding that while someone is different, it's okay to be that way, but this is still not full inclusion. The next move in awareness is diversity. This is the conscious move to recruit people into one's community or sphere of influence because they are different in some way. While closer, this is still not inclusion. Inclusion begins at the level of engagement. And at this stage, we learn to navigate the hangups. At this point, inclusion can start moving into the belonging phase. It is at this point that we value the person and their unique points of view. We honor, honor their intersectionality and if they are trustworthy, they can earn our trust, our admiration, and our love. For someone to truly belong, they need to feel like they are an integral component needed by the whole. Verna Myers uses the metaphor of a dance. She says, diversity is when you're invited to a dance. Inclusion is when you're actually asked to dance. I would like to close with these words from Moving Diversity Forward by Verna Myers. It is an excellent book that has great ideas on how to get past awkward moments and make diverse environments inclusive. She says, the golden rule is helpful sometimes, but it does not recognize that people from different cultural backgrounds and experiences may have different expectations, needs, and interpretations about what respect and love look like. Accepting that you don't know is an actual step in the direction of greater racial harmony. Once you admit ignorance, you begin asking rather than telling, listening rather than proclaiming, and learning rather than teaching. Besides, I find it less stressful not to have to pretend that I'm cool and I know everything. Don't you? Thank you, Sophia, for those wonderful words. Uh, we will wrap up our service today with a responsive uh, reflection or litany. Uh, that was suggested by Reverend Laura. This litany is from Reverend Katie Scudera from First Parish in Needham, Massachusetts. I invite you now to join me in a litany of solidarity. Many of us are afraid of the coming years because we ourselves or a loved one face oppression, which we fear could worsen. For our litany, I will name positions of privilege in our society and those who are less privileged who as Unitarian Universalists, we are called to be in solidarity with. I ask that if you are part of the privileged identity group, you would respond to each call for solidarity with the words, we pledge our support to those of the marginalized group. We will begin with one example. I can say with you, from those of us who are heterosexual or cisgender, we honor the LGBTQ community and commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. Now please reply at home, we pledge our support. We pledge our support. From those of us who are white or Euro-American, we honor people of color, Black, Latinx, <laughs> Asian, and Indigenous, and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our, our support. support. From those of us who have not been imprisoned, we honor those who have been incarcerated and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. support. <laughs> From those of us who are not Muslim or Jewish, we honor our Muslim and Jewish neighbors and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We but pledge our support. support. From those of us who are insulated from the effects of climate change, we honor those on the front lines and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge, we our, pledge support. our support. Climate change. 
Oh, for those of us who are men, we honor women, trans people, and gender queer people, and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. From those of us from middle or upper income households, we honor those who struggle with poverty and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. Pledge support. support. From those of us who are neurotypical and of presently healthy body, we honor those who are differently abled and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. From those of us who have American citizenship, we honor those who are immigrants and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. From those of us who have reliable healthcare access, we honor those who don't and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. From those of us who have not been assaulted, we honor those who are survivors and we commit ourselves to acts of solidarity. We pledge our support. For all those who suffer from prejudice, poverty, violence, disaster, illness, and environmental degradation, who have not named or perhaps do not know yet, we keep our hearts and minds open to solidarity in new ways to new people. We pledge our support. So ends our reading for today. Our closing song will be uh, from the group Foreign Figures, uh, used with permission, um, called Hey Love. And as we listen to this music, we will again honor the memory of those who have died. Just see me when I'm feeling down. Straight 
struggling to pick myself up off the ground. Hey love, hey love, hey love, can you feel me now? Hey love, oh. Hey love, hey love, hey love, can you feel me now? Please listen to my broken sound Turn around You'll see me as I'm feeling down Tammy is going to put the chalice extinguishing words into the chat box. You are invited to unmute yourselves. Stand uh, as you are willing and able and say our chalice extinguishing words together. We extinguish this chalice, but not the warmth of the community, the light of truth, or the energy of action. We hold each other in our hearts until we meet again. As we prepare to leave this space and depart ways, let us remember to keep in our heart that none of us is perfect, yet we are perfect just the way we are. Let us remember that it is a blessing to live an authentic life, one we are one in body and spirit. Let us look for ways that we can in our realms of influence and in our personal lives, discover and deal with our own personal hangups so that we can enjoy the blessings inherent in a truly inclusive life. <clears throat> so just as a reminder, <clears throat> uh, everyone is welcome to join us for a social hour following a 10 minute break. We'll, we will start the social hour at 1125. Thank you everyone. Going